Hi everyone and welcome to episode number 57 of the Karen Knits podcast. My name is Karen and I'm coming to you from South Central Pennsylvania where I live, where I work, where I knit and where I get into all kinds of other crafting shenanigans. We have a gorgeous day here today. It's bright, it's sunny, it's warm, it's in the high 60s right now. It's gorgeous out. It's a little bit of a breeze and once I'm done podcasting and get this going up onto YouTube, the hubby and I are heading out for a while this afternoon. Um, it's his birthday today so he wants to go and play some mini golf and then we're going to get some pulled pork barbecue for supper tonight. So it'll be fun. And what else? Today is Saturday, March the 27th, 2021. And if you're a new viewer, welcome. I'm so happy to have you here. If you're a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming back for another week to see what I've been up to with my knitting. And without further ado, let's, let's see what I've been working on. I've actually got three whips that I'm working on. One is a new cast on, one is sort of a new cast on and the other one's something I've been working on for several months now. So let's get started. My first, out! I just stabbed my belly. <laughs> my first sort of new whip is another sock in, or sock is another mitten on the Mitten Garland Advent Calendar. It's a pattern by Kathy Lewinsky and it's a series of 24 little mittens with Christmassy Advent designs on them. I started this early in January. I'm working on it with a group of friends and a group of friends and I are working on it together as a, a knit along and our goal is to do one mitten every two weeks. I'm a little bit behind. This mitten should have been finished yesterday. It's not finished. It won't be finished until later, probably late this week coming up. And then I'll be already a week behind on mitten number seven. It's all good. It's all good. So this is mitten number six. I have a start on it. I've started the, the thumb gusset increases and I made a little bit of progress on it. I worked on it over a couple days in the last week and I'll get back to it once I'm done with with one of the other whips that I'll show you, my new cast on. Once that's done, I'll be getting back to this guy and getting him finished. So for this I'm using 2.25 millimeter needles or US1 and I'm using just a variety of Knit Picks palette yarn that I have just kicking around in my stash. I'm doing it mostly in reds, greens, some like the light yellow. I'm not sure if yellow is really a Christmassy color, but uh, whatever, whatever. It also has a little bit of gray and some browns here and there. So that's, don't fall. Uh, sorry, it looked like it was gonna slide off the chair beside me. <laughs> So that's my first first whip that I've worked on this a little bit this past week and I have it's it's sort of a new cast on it's just a new a new one within the series of 24 little mittens. My second work in progress is housed in my fringe supply bag and this is my Demyaka Lopa cardigan or my flea cardigan. And it's a pattern by Pinaguri. And I got a little bit of progress done on this this past week. A decent amount of progress. I'm using, for this, I'm using whole super soft yarn in a variety of colors. Um, silver gray. And I just gotta look back in my cheat sheet with what colors I've used on here. Um, silver gray is the main color. Cobalt is the, the main contrast color. And then I also used indigo, robin's egg, pineapple, and breeze are the other colors. So these are all Holst Super Soft yarns. And I'm using a 2.75 and a 3.0 millimeter needles or US 2 and 2.5. And 
So the 2.75 is for the, the ribbing at the bottom, the ribbing around the neck, the cuffs on the sleeves, and it'll be used on the button bands as well. The 3.0 millimeter is used for the rest of the body. So I got a, a goodly bit of progress done this past week. And here's, here's where we are now. You'll see this is, this is new. But what I finished was I did finish the ribbing on the bottom. I went a little drop longer than the pattern called for. I think the pattern called for two and a quarter inch. I went a little closer to three inch on the, the bottom ribbing. And there's a little bit of different detail on the color work. The robin's egg was added in here before we transitioned into cobalt for, for the, the cuff. The cu Is it a cuff on your waist? No. The ribbing on the the hip. And I've also picked up the stitches and started on the armhole or the arm on the first sleeve. And I've got a little bit done. I have the pink. The blue marker is just marking where I started and the the pink marker there's going to be a whole a whole herd of pink markers running down there cuz that's just going to mark each of my decrease rounds. So, I decrease every inch, inch and a quarter thereabouts. I'll be decreasing all along the, the length of the sleeve. So I still have a long way to go. It's just the beginning of the sleeve. I don't have a circular needle that's short enough to do this completely in the round. So I am going to be doing, I am going to be doing the sleeves in Magic Loop. Don't like that as much for doing the sleeves, but I got used to just going around and around in circles without having to manipulate the, the cables on the body, but maybe I'll look into getting some shorter length or shorter circumference needles, but maybe not. We'll see. And I'm not entirely excited about the way my join is. I don't even know if you can, yeah, it's a little bit, a little bit airy <laughs> in, in this spot. So I might go back in and snug up that little bit where I've joined in the round there. But that's okay. Well, we'll fix that. But it does look a little bit I guess a little bit, the stitches are loose and there's a bit of gaps and a little bit of holes there. So I might go back and, and tweak that a little bit afterwards, but there's my progress. So I'm not sure how much more I'll get done on this in the upcoming week. We'll see. We'll see when I finish the next whip I show you. We'll see when I get that done. And also see when I get the the mitten finished as well. So my goal for this week is to finish the last whip I'm going to show you. I want that finished before I talk to you next Saturday. And I also would like to get mitten number six finished before I talk to you next. So that might, between the two of them, that might take up most of the rest of my free time this week. So I might not get back to my sleeve for another week yet, but we shall see. So that's my progress on Demiakalopa. It's coming along nicely. I'm not sure when I'm going to be... Spring has sprung. <laughs> Loud cars are coming out. Motorcycles are coming out. Actually, I think that was a car. Anyway, so... I'm not sure if I will get Demiakalopa completely finished in time to wear it this year or this this season. I suspect I suspect I'll get to wear it maybe once or twice just because I have to wear it uh, this spring. Or my worst case scenario, it'll be ready and I'll wear it once we get to the fall. So that that's that's fine. I think I might resign myself to I probably won't get to wear it until the fall and not fret about making sure I have it done as fast. 
We'll see. Just drinking plain old black tea. Nothing fancy today. And my my new cast on this week is the next pair of socks for Sock Madness. And I love these. Oh, I love this pattern. Who am I kidding? I, I love all the patterns. I, I absolutely love, 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 love Sock Madness. So as we talked about last week when I showed you, I made it through the qualifying round. I qualified to get placed on a team for Sock Madness for the, I want to say that, the real part of the competition. So I did qualify and I was placed on a team. They announced the teams earlier this week. Was it Tuesday? I'll, I'll put a little note up here. I forget exactly which day it was that they opened up the teams. I want to think it was on Tuesday. Kind of think it was on Tuesday. And then, so I'm on Team U or Team Uckland. Euclid? These are all the teams this year are named after stars and constellations. And so I'm on, it's U K U L N however you you guys know my pronunciation is spot on so <laughs> I'm on team Euclid a Euclid and it's I was very frightened initially because typically with sock madness what they do is the teams progressively get faster they the moderators have some special magic that they do to place people on teams where you where you actually fit. So some of the teams have slower knitters and more inexperienced knitters on them. Some of the teams are middle of the pack and some of the teams have the really speedy, speedy highly experienced knitters on it. And typically either they, they usually go through naming the teams going through letters of the alphabet. And the last few years, the teams at the beginning of the alphabet were the slower teams, the more inexperienced teams or members, and those near the end of the alphabet were the really fast teams. And I usually landed somewhere in the middle because I'm average speed, mid speed knitter. Um, I have a lot of experience knitting, but time doesn't necessarily always permit me with oodles noodles of spare time for knitting. So I'm usually in the middle of the pack. So when I saw the teams come out and I was on team U, I will admit to a moment of panic <laughs> because I thought, oh my gosh, I'm on a fast team. I'm gonna be dead in the water so fast. <laughs> But it turns out this year they mixed it up. The slowest team starts somewhere in the middle of the alphabet and then it gets progressively faster. So the actual the end of the alphabet and the very beginning of the alphabet are the mid-range people. And then as you get towards the middle of the alphabet again, it gets fast, the teams get faster. So that's what I've read people have, I've read on um, the group thread on Ravelry, what people are hypothesizing that's happened. So I was a little bit relieved to find out that I am not actually on one of the fastest teams, but on a mid-range team, which is where I belong. So there are so many people this year. It's amazing the number of people who are involved with this especially it grows every year it gets bigger and bigger and bigger so this year there are 26 teams so it goes through the entire alphabet again and each team has 60 six zero members on it so we start sock madness this year is starting with 1000 where did i write it down 1560 knitters are competing and then there's the cheerleader teams, which is a whole nother category of people who are, who are participating. But there are 1,560 people who are competing 
in Sock Madness this year. So now what happens is when they release round one, we get the pattern, everyone on all the team starts knitting as fast as they can. And the first 50 people on each team advance to round two. So basically every round, the 10 slowest knitters on each and every team from the beginning to the end of the alphabet, the slowest 10 knitters are eliminated. And this will continue until you get to the last, the second last round where I think it's nine individuals will be eliminated in the second last round. And then the fastest person on each and every team go head to head in the final. So they'll have 26 individuals competing head to head to be the champion. I know I'm never gonna land there. <laughs> I, am, I doubt I will ever get to the very end. But I'm hoping, this year I'm hoping I make it to round four. I'd like to make it finish round four, maybe be eliminated in round five. I'll be, I'll be really pleased with myself if I'm not eliminated until round four or five. Stay tuned, see how far I get. We shall see. So the specs or the pattern details came out at I think it was about seven in the morning, seven or eight in the morning on Wednesday. So it gave us the details that we would need 100 grams, so many yards of fingering weight yarn. And they recommended a solid or a tonal or something that's maybe um, a subtle gradient. Stripes might work, but they sent out those that information so we were able to pick and choose what kind of yarn we might want to might want to use and then the pattern dropped at almost two o'clock wednesday afternoon so we only had to wait about five or six hours for the i think it was only five or six hours for the pattern to come out after the specs came out and then everyone started knitting like maniacs <laughs> so i cast on right away wednesday afternoon and after I decided what yarn I wanted to use, and I, I got cast on, and I'm, I'm making decent progress. I'm using another one of the yarns that I was pointing out back here. It's a, a nice kind of aqua blue kind of color. It's a little bit tonal. So it's some lighter and darker parts to it. So it's not a completely, it's not a completely solid aqua blue. It's a little bit, it's, it's a mild tonal. And I've made decent progress. Well, let me, how about I tell you what they are? <laughs> I'm so good at this, aren't I? Um, these are Evil Choices by Sabrina Nestlinger. And here's where I am. I am enjoying this so much. This, these are so pretty. I really am loving these patterns, or these patterns. This pattern, it has all kinds of cables. The patterns are mirrored, so there is a left and a right sock. And you had a choice. You could knit the pattern. That's why they have them, they're, they're evil, not evil, evil choices where you could knit the pattern with a whole boatload of purl stitches and follow the cable pattern for that or you could knit the entire pattern inside out and it's when I say inside out I don't mean to knit them the way you would with you know some people do color work where they will knit inside out and they will knit around this side and then come back and knit around the side closer to you and you'll knit so that they, the floats are going around the outside so you have a little bit more, more um, space for the floats and you have less problems with it being too tight. But these are knits completely inside out. They can be knit completely inside out where 
you're doing mostly knit stitches and all the cabling is done on the inside of the fabric. So I sat there scratching my head about this for quite a while actually, <laughs> trying to decide if I wanted to do the purl side or the inside outside. And that I also thought, well, maybe I'll do one of each, but I kind of thought if I do one of each, I was afraid that my tension would be different doing one of each. Um, and I'm actually surprised. Usually my pearl tension is, is quite loose, but I've been making a very conscious effort to do my pearls, make sure I'm purling a little tighter than I normally do. I'm hoping that doesn't backfire on me and that they're not too small once I'm done. If they're too small, they'll be a gift for someone. So here's what I have so far. The, my right sock, see I've marked my right sock with a red marker, so red and right. And the left is yellow, so it's the L and a Y, so they're both straight lines for each of those. So that's why I keep track of which is which. The right leg is finished. The left leg, I'm on row, the cuff is done, obviously, and I'm on row, I finished row 23 out of 61 on the leg. So I'm almost halfway done the second leg. And then I'll get into the heel flap, or the, the heel flap, the gusset, the heel turn, the gusset, and then start heading down the foot. But it's a really pretty pattern. It's got these neat little branches. And I am going to have, and I'm, I can live with that, I am going to have a nice little line on either side with some laddering with my pearls. I'm fine with I That doesn't bother me. I know some people, it drives them nuts. I'm not that huge a perfectionist. And the other thing is you couldn't see it before. Isn't that just the cutest thing? I love it. And it has this heart that's in there. And then there's going to be kind of this looks like a branch or the trunk of a tree that's going to continue on down the foot. And then all of these branches are all kind of going to weave over and they're going to connect into the trunk and follow the trunk down to the toe. It's a really pretty pattern. It's really pretty. And it's been fun watching people trying to decide whether to do pearl side or inside out. I don't mind doing the pearl stitch. Maybe there's something, some people probably think there's something seriously wrong with me because I, I don't mind doing the pearl stitch. I've settled into a nice groove with it the way I knit continental. And I find the pearl stitch, it's, it's very, straightforward and easy and comfortable for me to do. My hand motions, the way I work the yarn, I have no problems with doing miles of purl. I will admit though that because I'm trying to make sure I tension it a little bit more, I'm starting to get some some aching in my, th in my right hand thumb. Um, my, I do find that because of the way I'm trying to tension and hold it, my right hand is is feeling is feeling it so I am trying to be very conscious of spending spending some time taking breaks where I will put my knitting down and I will I'll just make an effort to really work out and stretch and rest and relax relax my hands and my fingers and over the years I have developed problems in my hands um, and in my joints, I've had trigger finger on my thumb. I've had surgery on that and I've had trigger finger problem on my left pinky. I've had surgery to release that. I have, I can feel the little bump in this, my middle finger on the left hand and it's relaxed some now, but for a while it was starting to lock up. So I'm hoping that that one doesn't go. I also find that in the, especially in the morning, and not just since I've been knitting this particular sock, don't get me wrong, it's not, it's not from this sock. I am noticing that um, I might be starting to develop some carpal tunnel problem. 
where I find that if I'm working, I've found the last while when I'm right first thing in the morning when I'm sipping my tea and doing some knitting, I'm finding that this thumb has the feeling that it, it goes numb and it's fall, it has a feeling that it's falling asleep. Same, especially in the morning. It's better later in the day. But I also find that if I'm working with the mouse for any amount of time in the morning where I have this hand on my mouse, and I have one of those, um, I'm a fancy, what was that, ergon ergonomic mice where you just, my hand sits there and you just have the ball that you move around with your thumb to direct the mouse around. I am finding that when I'm using my mouse in the morning that I lose feeling in my thumb. So... I'm trying to make sure that I'm resting my hand with while I'm knitting so that I don't make things worse. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm trying to be conscious of that and trying to make sure that I don't create more problems for myself, for my hands and repetitive strain injuries. But so, so far I'm, I'm loving the pattern. I'm loving knitting this and I, th I should be okay to get through this round. I, I'm hoping to have both legs finished today, and then I'm hoping to get through at least both of the heel turns and into the gussets on both of them tomorrow, by the end of tomorrow, and then the foot should be fairly quick. So I'm hoping I can have both, have the socks completely finished well before Wednesday we'll see how that goes it might not happen I'm going to lose most of the afternoon for knitting once I finish filming I'm going to get the editing done then hubby and I will have some lunch and then we're going to head out to a little park just not too far down the road from us they have an arcade they have a bumper cars they have mini golf. My husband wants to go there for the afternoon for his birthday. So he wants to play around a mini golf. So we will be playing mini golf and probably arcade games and who knows what else we'll do when we're there. So I can't, I can't take my knitting. <laughs> I'll leave my knitting at home. The, the charts are too detailed. I can't, I wouldn't be able to work on it. Well, I wouldn't be able to, to manage working on it while, while I'm trying to play mini golf. The husband might disown me if I tried that. <laughs> I'll knit almost anywhere. But I think, I, I think I'll pass on trying to knit and play mini golf at the same time. And then we're going to get some supper. Uh, there's a food truck that parks out front across the street from us. He's usually there every few weeks and he does pulled pork stuff. And I think what we're going to do, I think that's what the husband decided he'd like for supper, is I'll run across the street. He, usually when we get food from this guy, he's the one that has, he's the one that goes out and waits in line and gets the food. I have to, well, I, I, I have to do it today. That's my treat today. He was teasing. He said, well, for my birthday, you can go and get the, get the food. So I'll go and wait in line and I'll get food from the, the food truck for us for supper tonight. I think what we're going to do is he does this amazing dish. It's pulled pork nachos. They are so, so good. It's just this, this huge takeout container full of uh, nacho chips. It's loaded with pulled pork, barbecue sauce, and melted cheese. The, um, like the, the taco dip kind of cheese on top of it. Oh my gosh, it is so, so delicious. So that's for supper tonight. And um, we get one, we, we, whenever we've got it, we get one plate or one order of the nachos and we share it. It's, it's more than enough for two people. So we will get the pulled, or pulled pork nachos for supper tonight. And then we'll sit and have you want, he's got a movie picked out that he wants to watch this evening. So we'll, we'll watch a movie. So I'll be able to happily knit all the way through the movie. Um, he'll probably have a nap sometime this afternoon too. So that'll free up a little bit more knitting time for me. But otherwise, a lot of my afternoon is going to be eaten up 
just spending time with the hubby, doing stuff for him for his birthday. So, and then tomorrow I'll get more knitting time again. So, I am hoping to have the socks done in a, a decent amount of time. So far on our team, two people. There's two people on Team U that are finished. There's several that have posted pictures in our our group that have completed one or have one sock 100% finished and are on to the second sock. I'm not quite at the halfway point. I like to consider once I'm at the heel and going working through the heel on both that I'm at roughly the halfway point. At least once the the heel turn is complete, I consider that to be halfway finished. So I have one leg done. 23 out of 61 rows done on the second leg. So I'm well on the way. I'm hoping to have, as I said before, I'm hoping to have both legs 100% done before I go to bed tonight. We'll see. So I think that's about it for today. It's might have, well, maybe not a shorter, maybe marginally shorter than some of my others have been lately. Um, so come back next week see what my um, Evil Choices socks look like. They By next Saturday, they really they have to be done by next Saturday or I suspect I'll, I might be eliminated by then. And so next week I hope I can show you the finished Evil Choices socks and mitten number six. I'm hoping all of those are done. And then I'm also hoping I have more progress on on my first sleeve on Demiakalopa. I also have a quilt that I'm working on. I will show you that probably next week or the week after. Um, my mom did the the top. She had um, scrap fabric that she put together and she asked if I would like it and I'm like, yeah, I'd love it. So she gave me the, the quilt top. I took it to a sewing, a, a sewing store not too far down the road from our place and there's a woman there that does custom quilting, so we so I selected the backing. I gave her that. She took it away, and a month later, she has a, a long arm quilting machine that she manually moves through. So she had the quilt for roughly a, almost a month, and she did all. She took the top, got the backing and the the batting, and she did all the quilting on it, and then attached. The first half of the binding is half attached. So what I have to do with it now is I need to take it and hand stitch the binding around to the back of the quilt to finish it. It's almost done. And the only part that I'm going to physically do myself is to finish sewing the binding, hand sew the binding down. So once I'm, I might switch from Demiakalopa Instead of working on that, I think I might work on getting the binding sewn down in the next one. I'd like to get that done before it starts getting too warm because I'm not going to want a quilt on my lap. <laughs> I'm not going to want to have a quilt on my lap and hand sew that for. It's probably a double bed size. It's not, it's not a queen size. It's not that big. But it's probably a good, it'll fit a double bed. So... I'm not going to want to work on that once it starts getting warm out. So I'm hoping I can get going on that soon. So my guess is in the next week, finish Evil Choices, finish mitten number six, and get going on the binding on the quilt. So I probably will show you the quilt next week. The other thing I remembered this morning is I completely forgot to videotape my knitting coloring book. I was going to get that filmed and put it up on my channel for you guys to see and I forgot to do it. So if I have time in the next little while I will get that filmed and put up onto my channel so you can see what was in the in the coloring book that the knitting coloring book that I bought uh, when we were on our little vacation um, a week ago. And I also have some yarn coming to me. I have not bought yarn yet this year, but a friend of mine reached out to me and she had some yarn that was given to her. 
she's had for several years and she's just decided she will never use it. She's tried it and she just doesn't like working with it. It's, a, it's, it's two different types of mohair yarn. So she's going to, she has mailed that to me and it was supposed to be her on Thursday. The way the postal system seems to be functioning lately, it's not here yet. So, and this is for Saturday, it's still not here yet. So hopefully next week I'll also have yarn to show you. Uh, it's gonna be a hit to my stash because I'm trying to work my stash down, not up. And it's, I think, I think she said there's like 25 skeins of yarn in there. So it's two different types. I'm hoping I can make a couple sweaters with it. Um, mix the mohair with something else. So I'll have to work out what the yardage is and see what I can do with that. But I'll show you that next week if it's arrived by then or whenever it does get here, I'll, I'll, I'll show you that. So I'm going for real this time. So time to go get the editing done get a bite to eat and go play some mini golf with the hubby. All right, take care everyone and I will see you guys again next week. Bye.